Look at that. Mm. We're gonna put the Akka house in there, but too many sides. Next year, right? Yeah. Too many sides. <laughs> this is awesome. Three, two, one. Good morning. Welcome to the Seneca County Commissioner's uh, Board meeting. It's uh, March 2nd, 2023, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, uh, your former Commissioner Kirscher is with us today, and uh, he will lead us in prayer. Yeah, please join me in a short Latin prayer here. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be present today in assisting this board to do the things that are in the best interest of the people they serve and that are your will. We ask in a special way, as always, that you protect those who are protecting our freedoms and their families. We ask all this through your Son. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Fairdiesel? Here. Commissioner Schultz? Here. Commissioner Hecker? Here. Okay, at this time I'll accept the motion to approve the digital audio recording of our prior uh, board session on Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. So moved. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schultz? Yes. Commissioner Fairdiesel? Yes. Thank you. So, first on our agenda, it's uh, Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month, and uh, we have a guest with us. We've Luke. got some guests coming. Is there we have some guests coming, so would you like me to, we can wait. We can so wait a little bit. Jump, yeah. We'll jump down and then we'll call Bryce up. Thanks. You, you know, it did seem a little lonely back there. <laughs> <laughs> you yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we'll jump ahead then, and we have a... Bring your team with you if you like. Yeah, Seneca Regional Seneca Channel, Channel. Uh, their report, uh, we're going to... We'll, we'll bring the developmental disability report in afterwards. Bryce Riggs, you're yeah. here. Yep, you so report? not really much of a report, um, but you know, the biggest thing that, you know, like we present usually in the fall of every year, kind of talk about get through spring, get through summer, get through most of the fall, talk about some of the initiatives we're working on. Um, obviously, I know that we've you know, sent something forward to be uh, looked at today uh, through your contract with the Second County Commissioners uh, for the tourism dollars. Uh, the, you know, obviously, Seems like yesterday that I was just up here talking about things that we were going to do with those dollars. And I think, you know, obviously a lot of the, the, the footprint was that, you know, that we made a roadmap for success. Tourism Council, you know, additional feedback from our tourism partners to ensure we were doing the right things. I've been very adamant since the day I started uh, that the tourism dollars are, in fact, not ours. Uh, these are dollars that are just entrusted to us to do the right things, to work with our partners to ensure that really we're promoting our community as a whole. Uh, and then we're doing the best things that we can so we get visitors here uh, and we also uh, really you know educate our own residents about all the great things that are happening in our community uh, and really be another partner uh, with you know the chamber obviously tsap uh, and so many partners that help make this community a great place to live work play and especially visit for our organization uh, and so really you know our 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 plan for those dollars for the additional for another three years would be nothing different than what we did We've done so far, I think we've come a long way uh, with our tourism dollars, ensuring that they're spent, I think, in a trustful, uh, trustful way uh, that really benefits our community. We would continue that progress that we've made. So we've come a long way, uh, but we certainly aren't even close to where we want to be. There's one thing that our organization is, and I said, you know, the team does a great job, and we're extremely scrappy. Uh, I think if you look around other tourism or organizations throughout the state of Ohio, like that word. we got a little grit, mm -hmm. uh, which I think yeah. is important. I think obviously. We're all from right. Seneca County, um, and you know, for us, do the best interest to ensure that this is the best place uh, for folks to be. And so, I mean, I really would uh, ask the commissioners, please consider our three-year proposal for another additional three years. Uh, we'll continue to do the work that we've, we've done so far, the groundwork that has been laid, continue to work with our partners to ensure that those dollars are spent 
uh, in the most efficient way and effective way to grow our community as a whole. I know Commissioner Schuss looked at the coloring book. Uh, it would be a tourist event that we had planned. Uh, you know, our, a lot of our ideas are, are really endless, uh, and really those dollars help fund uh, what we're doing, and really the reason we're coming to you guys this early in the year uh, for that additional three is because a lot of our projects are multi-year, uh, that they start, we start, you know, spending some of those dollars today, uh, that, you know, there's, these are, you know, like our brew tour, our uh, geocaching event that we're planning, uh, trail that we're planning for this year, those are dollars will continue to be expended for the next few years. So really, we'd like to you know, renew that partnership with the commissioners uh, so we can continue to do the work we've done. And in March, uh, tell us about the uh, museum tour. This is a, definitely a Seneca County specific mm -hmm. event. And uh, let, tell yep. us about so that. Yeah. We have an event uh, March 24th, 25th, and 26th, uh, from noon to four. Uh, all the museums and galleries throughout the county uh, will be open at uh, no charge. Uh, obviously, donations will be accepted because all these organizations are, you know, obviously, Nonprofits budgets are tight, uh, and really it came to me. Uh, one of a uh, gentleman, vice president of the university, Ms. Blondie, said, "Hey, I live in Michigan. Uh, we did this event a few years ago. Uh, I've been in the community for now a number of years, and I haven't explored the Civil War Museum. I haven't done the Sacred County Museum, uh, but I've done a few things. And so, really, it's kind of an excuse to take your family out as a, a passport. But they felt a number of uh, our attractions, and then there's also some live experiences. So the Punyan Project, uh, Ryan Punyan will be doing live glass blowing." Uh, Hawks Crystal, a lot of people don't understand that they have that storefront also on South Washington Street, but they also have a, uh, a workshop up to D3 uh, where it's really how it's all made. And I think it, obviously you appreciate a little more about the work on South Washington Street. You see it behind the scenes yeah. that Aiden uh, does over at Hawks. And so those kind of things, and so we're just trying to get people, um, we do a great job, I think, of you know, sending our message outwards about how do you get people within the our own county to be excited and understand what's actually happening here. The public and all the other oh, yeah. villages are all open, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's yep, so be a be a tourist in your own town. Yeah. That's what it's called and um, you know, all it's the entire county and so I think I was I'm not I was kinda of surprised that when I started making phone calls, everyone's like, Yeah, you know, they're not usually open on Sunday. Hey, we'll open up Sunday for this. Hey, you know, we usually don't uh, you know, we don't usually have four to four on Friday, but we will for this. And so I think the biggest thing is that there's buy-in. Uh, Marissa made actually all the graphics, uh, the posters uh, for all the museums, and we printed them for them to be picked up, uh, both in Fostoria, uh, also in Tiffin. And so really our thing is that we want to ensure that they're successful. How do you give them the tools they need? And obviously resources are already tight with all of these organizations, so we can do the work for them, uh, provide them the social media graphics provide them all the materials to be successful. I think it's extremely important. Um, and we've done also the chip contest. Uh, we've you know engaged the art community. Uh, we feel like this is a good step forward with the museums and galleries. And uh, Senator Bill Reinke, when I first started this job, was, hey, Bryce, we need to get these people together, uh, to work together, to promote as an in, in entire group. Uh, I just told a few weeks ago when we met that, hey, look, we're doing this. And this is like step one in a longer term of what what we're looking to do with uh, this group. Well, your staff behind you, your team is, uh, uh, you guys work hard. For sure. Really so this is Marissa and Deb. Um, and Deb and so we've done been it. around a long time. And uh, you got you got a second wind in you, didn't you? Yeah. When, when these two came in. She asked you, I said, uh, you know, I, I help raise the money and Marissa helps spend the money and Deb just checks the money. So uh, <laughs> it works out well for our organization. And well. We've uh, received your contract. I think we've all looked at it. Just quick, before you get too far, I got a question. Um, this, yeah. yeah, so that's where we're at with it. Yep, you're up. Yeah, so what are the hours then on, uh, for, are all the museums mm -hmm. going to be open the same hours? Yeah, so okay. 12 to 4. Uh, there's two exceptions just because I've already pre-planned events uh, with the Seneca County Museum and the Reds has a show that day. So it'll be 12 to 4, uh, 4 p.m on that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and so we'll have to get so many uh, uh, stamps at each place. And so we'll, I think it's uh, half plus two in the attraction side of things, and it's half of the live experiences. So uh, they'll have uh, obviously a lot of opportunities to go out and explore um, the entire county. And there's things like, for example, the Wesley Art Gallery that I've actually never been to myself. And so we're looking forward to, you know, kind of an opportunity to get people out. Hey, anything else on the contract? You're good. Yeah, and yeah. So our contract looks good. Yep. You were yeah. good. I think Jamie, we're just waiting for Derek to sign off on. We're we'll we good. Yeah. We're good. It's on the agenda today. Okay, so we're we've we liked it as long as Derek signed off on it. Awesome.
we will take action today. Mm -hmm. I read this wasn't that long ago, Commissioner Kirscher was up here, uh, kind of, I don't want to say he was drilling you, but he was. It's good. That's he on. was holding you accountable. And that's, that's what what you going to do with the money? You know, what you, it's kind of, it's exciting to see you back here, you know, proving yourself and doing great things in the community. So, yeah, we're pleased to uh, do it for three years. We'll take action here in the middle. I should also add, um, I know when I, when I came here um, a couple of years ago, I know that at the time Commissioner Kirscher mentioned the city of Diffin uh, having a role with him, uh, the lodging tax and that they yeah. received some. Uh, so now for the last two years, uh, we received $25,000, which is about half of the, the lodging tax that the city receives. Um, and we're actually up, uh, I think in a few weeks, we'll be up for a uh, vote for a three-year contract as well. So the contracts will really align and mirror uh, what the county commissioners are and allows us, I think the biggest thing is for budgeting purposes, and those kind of things to ensure that those dollars will be there and uh, that we can continue to do a lot of the uh, things that we're doing as an organization. So I think it's nice that the city is obviously, is, uh, has a play uh, in the, obviously the bigger vision of tourism for not only the city, but also the county as well. Do we have a contract with Boston Rain Chamber? So we actually, well, how it works with us is that uh, we don't. I don't know. We get uh, we get receive the full lodging tax uh, from the county commissioners minus like two percent for an admin fee through the auditor's uh, office, and then from there uh, we actually give some funds as well uh, to the Foster Ray Chamber for their uh, Seneca County tourism dollars, more or less. Uh, Merce and I sit on the uh, Foster Ray Tourism Council. Contract. To his point, or is that just? A, there's not. I don't think there's a formal contract. Kind of a Correct. Thing that we do. Everybody's happy with it. Correct. And the big thing I think. Uh, I didn't know that. that we've been doing as well um, is beyond those dollars. So it's like, for example, we buy the door cups for Fostoria now. We provide the funding for uh, half the nice. funding for their video last year. They did a promotional video. We're uh, sponsoring a farmer's market this year. Uh, their 5K that they do over there, we've sponsored in the last few years. So we try to we continue to look for opportunities uh, to support because we feel like obviously those dollars that we give the Fostoria Chamber for tourism uh, is, is great because that's like our formal obligation, but that doesn't, our obligation from there goes far beyond. Our visitor's guide this year uh, is has more Fostoria in it than it's ever had uh, in our history of our visitor's guides um, and has everything Fostoria as well in there. Nice job. Very good. Anything else? No. So we drained you out of all your information, right? What do you say? We, we drained you out of your information. Yeah, I know. There's nothing else Before left. Before you right? walk, I know this is visitor's bureau, but you received a state award yeah. with the chamber. Yes, we received the. So please uh, tell us about that way you have the floor. Yeah. This is Thank exciting. you. Exciting. Yeah. So uh, on last Thursday, uh, the team we went down to uh, the Chamber of Commerce Executives Ohio uh, conference, and we received the outstanding Chamber of the Year for under hundred under six hundred members from the entire state of Ohio. So hey. it's pretty cool. That's, cool. that's pretty pretty exciting. That's so, uh, we joke yeah. that we I've been going down for the last few years. Uh, that's awesome. And I'm in the Chamber world and fairly younger uh, than most chamber executives out there. And they've always been saying, hey, Bryce, one day you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. You'll learn these things. And it was kind of, uh, kind of weird to be up there receiving the award with the team for it because it's, you know, so we all do our best to help balance our work in the chamber, uh, between the visitor's bureau. Obviously, it's all important. So last year we received the Ruby Award from the state of Ohio for tourism and then the chamber. And then we just hit uh, number 500, our 500th member actually uh, yesterday. So things are, things are all good. Just, just congratulations. You to can team. come back Thanks. anytime with all the good news you want. For sure, I know. We love hearing it, and uh, I think the citizens should be be proud and, and grateful. It's very. Uh, it's. I feel we have good stewards of the bed tax money uh, at work. No, for sure. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Great. Thank Thanks. You. So, uh, Adam, would you like to come up? Uh, sure, Tisa. Yep. Housing update. So next we have uh, Adam Gilmore representing TSEP, and he will give us a housing update as they are working on a, a study. Oh, this is you want Riverfront. 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 That's what okay. I was saying. I just want to make sure I was talking about the right <laughs> thing. No, we are. We're <laughs> specifically <laughs> asking for the Riverfront. Yes. Okay. Well, 14 minutes into the meeting. That's okay. And then first correction. So, yeah, last week uh, Tyler brought up the Riverfront development and said that you guys have been some questions about it. So just wanted to give you a really quick little overview about what that project is and where it's currently standing. So, you may have seen some news early last month that the developer of that project 
has closed on the Kears Speed Shop location here in downtown Tiffin. Uh, that is going to be the eventual site for the entire new development. They're going to tear out those older buildings that are there now and put in a six-story development uh, with, uh, I, believe, I think the project one is a five over one, so five floors of residential over one floor of retail space. So there are going to be three, I think I believe it's three new retail spaces that will be available for lease for area businesses on the ground floor, uh, as well as a publicly accessible river walk uh, along the side there. Uh, and then on top of that, 75 units of new leasable apartments right here in downtown Tiffin. Uh, that building has gone through quite a rigorous process in terms of going through the Zoning Board of Appeals as well as uh, downtown Tiffin's Architectural Board of Review that is required for buildings in our historic district. So they, the developer, really did put in quite a lot of effort in making sure that they were meeting the requirements for that downtown district. Uh, the project was originally seven stories, they brought it down to six stories and changed the roof line to kind of make it fit a little bit more in downtown. One of the concerns that I think a lot of folks have is how is this going to fit in downtown? And through that work, if you were to stand on the corner of Market and uh, Washington, uh, right near the courthouse and look down the look down Market Street towards the river, towards uh, the Wattis Manor, you, it will, it won't dominate the skyline the way that I think a lot of folks were concerned about it. But, uh, it based on the renderings that we've seen and the renderings that were shown in the ADR, it does line up decently well with our current skyline from a lot of those vantage points. Uh, I know one of the major concerns is parking. I know there have been conversations about how the developer and where these, all these I mean, 75 units, that's a lot of folks, where are they going to park? I know there have been conversations ongoing, uh, but I'm not sure about how public those are, so I don't want to you know, jump in on that uh, and give too much away. Uh, other than that, you know, th it, it's going to be a very interesting new development. The 2019 housing study that was done for the city of Tiffin well, it was before COVID, uh, and that of course shuffled a lot of things. We have seen a desperate need for housing in Tiffin and Seneca County, and we will have an update to your point earlier on the housing study we are working on getting that all finalized here. Um, but we, the to your point, you know we're. 75 units of new housing right in downtown Tiffin is going to be really an amazing for our downtown businesses, for our area businesses. I think we're going to be excited to see those. I think we're going to be excited to see those. We'll throw them around and maybe I don't. Yeah. They, 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 they closed, like I said, they closed on the property in the beginning of last month. And my understanding is that they plan to move forward here. Any comments or questions? From anybody? No, a great update. Yeah, we have a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. I get. I've been getting questions from people, and it, yeah, it's just nice to kind of know what's going on. So, I appreciate the report. Yeah. Do we know when they're going to start the demo? Like, is it either summer or not? Um, I don't have any information on that. But I'm sure you know, when they're getting ready to do that. Well, here we so, but I'm hearing you right. Here you write. The, this is all private property. Yes. So where the city owns those lots and all that was in play originally, that's yes. not that, happening. So the original plan, I believe, is for the apartment complex to be oh, at the be part location. of that location. And then they were going to tear out the city parking lot there and put in, I believe, a hotel development, maybe a couple more apartments. I wasn't around for that, so I can't yeah. speak specifically. But yeah, that was. Acts following COVID, and um, they're just moving forward with the uh, so private developer buying private land for the building mm -hmm. up that needs all the code. Yeah, they, what's happening. they have gotten all their approvals from uh, zoning and the ABR. So they have, like I said, they worked very hard uh, with the city and uh, with the architectural board to okay. bring everything so into compliance to make sure that they uh, were following the rules and being a good community okay. partner. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Dad. Nice update. <laughs>
Lou, are we ready? We are. Sorry. Come on up, and then uh, I'll let you introduce your, your team, Marta. Now, this year, since we are, uh, what's today, the second, are we your first, uh, since it's the month of March, are you, is this your first uh, public entity that you've Yes. Come to because we are always seem to be last. You go to the no, city. You guys are you're the in Fostoria first, and you're in Tiffin, and then you that's come here. But next week we are everywhere. But we're kicking everything off. So we're, you we are, feel you are our official we feel kickoff. Uh, uh, we're privileged today. Yeah. And I've got a bunch of uh, really neat folks that are here to talk a little bit about some of the activities. Um, first, I want to say thanks to the commissioners for the support of us purchasing the building. The building will help us expand services in the county. Um, you've all heard of autism and the growth of autism, but the real impact to our program is we've seen about a 20% increase, if not higher than that, over the last several good, years with the number of children coming into our program. So we need space, we're out of space. Um, which is good. So we're hoping to take that new space and do some things with it to better serve our community and to create better community access for folks. Uh, we've been renting the Optima building for many of, you, of those of you who do not know. We finalized, I believe we finalized, the deal uh, with Mercy Hospital to purchase the Cancer Center and the Optima building. We've been leasing the Optima building for the last uh, like four or five years. And have been in negotiations with them for the purchase of the other two buildings over the last three years. So it's been a long process, but we're excited about that opportunity for growth for folks. Um, so we've got that. One thing I also wanted to point out, you know, we talk about awards. I don't know if I had the chance to tell the commissioners this, but two of our staff in Seneca County were honored at a statewide level for services. So we were we, we have Jackie Jarrett who received the direct support professional of the Year Award from our association um, for her work working with Wyatt um, Vysik, um and the commitment that she has had working with him and the time and energy that she has committed in terms of giving her life to help support him. And then one of our staff for an Amy trip was got the Partners in Excellence Award for a partnership and working collaboratively with community organizations. So it's kind of neat to see Seneca County being recognized at the state level for those type of things. So we, we, we have that. Um, we've got a lot of fun things planned. We talked about the game earlier a little bit. I love I love the jazz of the game. I mean, I have, um, and that really is what March is about, is kind of putting it out there and, and letting individuals with disabilities. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach. Um, Jimmy's leading <laughs> Have the opportunity to play, but also, to me, the most important part of the game is the sense of everybody coming together, people with disabilities and people with not, all together for a, for a community event. Awesome. And it just, to me, I've heard so many compliments over the years, and I encourage anybody that has not been there to come out. You don't have to play, because I can't play. At least you wouldn't want me to play. <laughs> <laughs> I think last time I played, I had my glasses broken into my face. The ball hit me in my blind spot. <laughs> in front of the crowd, it didn't, uh, but I haven't played since then. So. But I am there to cheer, and I would encourage people to come out and cheer. It's a great event. Um, with that, I'm going to turn over to Mara. You want to introduce the guests? Absolutely. Or have them introduce themselves, actually. So um, today we've brought four um, self-advocates, is what we call um, folks that work on their leadership skills with us. And we actually have two of our newest members. Um, so this is their very first speaking event um, ever. So. Um, would you like to come up and, and introduce yourself, or are you guys more comfortable sitting? We're, we're like sitting. So okay. We're doing this. So we will do that. So, um, Jerry, would you like to go first? You want to tell them your name? My name is Jerry. Yeah, your name's Jerry Brecker, right? And what event did you bring with us uh, to share with everybody today? And you want to invite everybody to this event? Yeah, bingo. Yeah. And why is bingo so important to you? You want me to hold it up? Why is bingo so important to you? 21st of March. Yep, it's the 21st of March. And Jerry, um, what does Bakery Bingo um, benefit? What group are you involved in? Unity. Unity. Um, so Jerry is an officer on our Unity Council. Um, he's Sergeant at Arms, so it's his first leadership position. Um, and what is Unity? Can you tell them? They probably don't know what Unity is. It's a conference, right, that people with disabilities plan mm -hmm. in Seneca for people in Seneca mm -hmm. County. So it's a very local, homegrown conference that was started in 1995. So it's been going on a long time. Would you like to pass out the flyer to everybody? 
No, you, <laughs> he's good at the delegating. He's good at 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 delegating. He's yeah. You did great, Jerry. Thank you. Nice to have, Jerry. Yeah, my, uh, my thing is part of my worker. My, I live in Tiffin. I work at um, uh, 4 to 40. And I, I in the stars, I, we have a, um, Basketball for um, DD Wale this month, and uh, the door open. Sitoka play some uh, the this month. Um, Doors open at six. Sit at seven. Some uh, stop. <coughs> And what did we talk about on the way here? We said, gosh, the game, there's a lot of people that go. What time should people get to the game? Said the cop, early. <laughs> be, be, be there early, 5 30. Yeah, okay. Good. <laughs> food, food, really? drink, pop, popcorn, <laughs> 50 50, draw, turkey, turkey. You guys play to some play too. In uh, March 30, start date. Would you like me to pass them up? Yeah, please. Thank you. 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 And, and I got this um Nick. This thing is for for you know where I was caught in. Nick, can you tell him your name? My name is Nick. And I got this um It's an it's, Easter egg hunt, right? It's an Easter egg hunt. And when is that Easter egg hunt? We're doing it a little differently this year. Normally it's on the same day as our Palm Sunday dinner, but this yeah, year March. It's April first. April first. Right? Yep, at the Opportunity Center in our nice new the Opportunity park. Center. Yep. And who stuffs all the eggs for these, this <coughs> Easter egg hunt? We stuff about 3,200 eggs. Yeah. 3,200 eggs. Action Club does that. Action Club does. Yes. And Nick's a proud member of Action Club. Yeah. Um, so we do that as a service project to our community. The kids are easier. It is April Fool's Day. All right. It's 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 <laughs> So we can probably have Tony dress up as a rabbit on that day. Just yeah. 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 like this. For everybody coming. Thank for all the kids coming to have fun Easter egg hunt. Thank you, Nick. David. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Nick. Um, my name is David Hackett. Um, um, I don't have to do it there. And I work on all the... Okay, we had all the fat daughter and I have uh gravity to see uh here plant today. Um Sunday Sunday April ten can't get what's the Sunday, April second? What is that? Uh Pump Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um we we order we order the dinner and or chicken. Um, March twenty. March twenty. Uh, twenty and it's gonna be a good crowd out there and oh, be. Don't tell them about the raffle. Rabbit ticket. Yeah, then you yeah. Grab your tickets, you eat your thing, and five dollars, and five dollars, and six tickets. Ditch tickets, rabbits, and money, or Easter. Or Easter. I think one year you won the 
grand prize, didn't you? Do you remember that? Yeah, big doll. <laughs> big doll. Yeah. It's not rigged or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Big doll. Big doll. Yes, actually, Nick, good, good call. Thank you for that. Yeah, go ahead and pass them up. That'd be wonderful. Um, Bill and good crowd. Thank you. Thank you. We had, um, we had, some we had to be here today. Thank you. David. Thank you. David. Thank you. David. Yes, David, thank you. Thank you, David. Who oh, sorry. So, these are part of our Thank big group. Some are beginning and learning to find their voice. Others have been in the program a couple of years and are a little more comfortable speaking. I thank you for the opportunity for them to get in front of folks to speak. Thanks for being here. Being able to speak to me is one of the helpful things we can do with disabilities because they're for the way to manage it. There we go. Um, these are all part of our leadership program. Melissa is here. Melissa is uh, in our cash department with Marta. They do a great job You're at welcome. supporting these folks and do a variety of other tasks um, to help support our program. Indeed, we are very blessed to have both of them and very unique to have a program called the Cast okay. Department or Community Advocacy and Support. Oh, okay. And they really are. are. It's always yeah. our public relations, but coordinate yeah. all of our activities in the community. And as Marta would say, we have more activities than we have time to keep up with. Because are you fairly new then? You know what? Um, oh, to no. this department, yes. Okay. Yeah, you, you were part. there and you moved in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I don't think you asked that. Yeah. 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 She's approaching her one year anniversary in our yes. department. So, um, yeah. And this year, oh, yeah. you know, we pick a theme every year for um, I didn't forget months. these guys. Um, this, <laughs> this year, we picked Thank you. Together We Are the Community. Um, and we had a, a state kickoff yesterday where we attended the Zoom, so where everybody was in the state house. Thank you. Um, but we had watched the program, and Jerry, do you remember what you said about why DD Awareness Month is important to you? Would you share with them? Are you comfortable with me sharing? Thank you. Yeah, and it was it was beautiful. So I don't know if you saw what Jerry just did. You want to show everybody? Be included. So that is, it was so powerful when he said that after we watched this kickoff program. And he did this gesture and said, it's so important because we are included. And we had picked nice the theme, Together We Are the Community. We are so blessed. Seneca County is like a gem in the state of Ohio. We have so many partnerships. We've got the chamber, you know, like your wonderful um, the commissioners. We are blessed to be able to do everything. We're talking on the way here. We're just thankful that you guys invite us to come every year and that we're welcomed. David was saying, not every county does that. I said, you know, you're right. We are lucky, aren't we? Yeah, we, most counties are allowed to do this, and everyone, but we are lucky you able to do this. We can, we can do this, we do nothing, but we can do this. Hope one that them, uh, we can hope one that them, let people know what's going on in this world. And some people don't know what where Ash Club is and inner meaning is. Nobody don't know. And what thirst is and depths depths but we think that they may be on your own one day and helping you to one day. So David um, is kind of recounting. Um, steps towards independence and responsibilities, that curriculum that Lou was mentioning earlier about leadership. And David's mentioned, um, you know, it might happen to you someday. I, I think in reference to, you know, he moved out on his own, his family, you know, his, his mom had passed and you moved out, yeah. and, you know, on your own. Um, and it, it's just an important thing yeah. to have that community support. I, I, Thank you. I, I, I glad I had that can't do that and meet a new people. We need a new people in here to move on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just on behalf of the opportunity, thank you, Commissioners, for your support, and thanks to the community and everybody for supporting us with all of our various events. And truly, I think we've become part of the community over the last 10, 15, 20 years, and continue, want to continue to do that and create opportunities for folks. 
to volunteer, work, play, and live in the community, and really, most importantly, fulfill our mission of improving the lives of people with disabilities. So, thank you very much. So, at this time, we'd like to present you with a proclamation. Real, real quick, Tony, before we yeah. get into that. Yeah, so, yesterday, you, yesterday, so this is I was good, out. Good. It's our turn now. <laughs> get out, so. Uh, so yesterday, I was down doing training last few days. So actually, at the state house, they uh, had a big event down there for the you know the the you know, this oh, building month. month. Yes, exactly. Okay. So I don't know if you guys ever been invited or how, I don't know. We who were closed out this year because it's such a. The hard part is it was, it was booked within the first day. Okay. We tried to register the sure. register the first day because the rotunda at the state house is only so big. Right. Did you guys and, down to uh, so okay. we video conferenced in and zoomed in, and people watched it via Zoom. And so we participated, but usually we're there. It's yep. just this year we got closed out. And I think what they're trying to do is rotate it to make sure everybody gets yeah. Yeah. access there. to it. Great crowd here, yeah. That's, I mean, I didn't stay for the whole bag. I had other things. We was down there for a conference, so, but I just was in and out of there seeing it. I was getting ready for that. Because usually we so, spend the morning there, and then we spend the afternoon. And the individuals will go speak with our state representatives to talk mm -hmm. about challenges, things that they see, things that they need to improve the system of supports for, for their lives. Good. Anything else? Any other comments? Thanks for all of your hard work. Thank you. Um, is there a question about that? Questions in the audience? No, is a question about what I'll be talking about today? We have a lot of smiles out there, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Schaff. Yeah, we have a proclamation here for you from the uh, Central County uh, Commissioners. Whereas individuals with developmental disabilities share a vision for a good life, and whereas each individual has abilities, skills, and talents to enrich the community and people around them, and whereas individuals with and without developmental disabilities live and work side by side across the county to form strong, diverse communities, and whereas the most effective way to increase developmental disability awareness is through everyone's active participation in community activities and the openness to learn and acknowledge each individual's contributions. Whereas, we encourage all citizens to support opportunities for people with disabilities. And now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Seneca County Board of Commissioners, Ohio, hereby recognize the month of March as Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. And we encourage all members of our community to take the time to get to know someone with a disability and what he or she has to offer. And witness whereof we, the Seneca County Board of Commissioners, have hereunto set our hand to the proclamation <coughs> the second day of March 2023. Commissioners Anthony Paradiso, Tyler Schuff, and Bill Franker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just we can do it in yeah. front here. I like it when uh, maybe you let them sit in your chair. Yeah. Guys hang around. Right. Like come around. Yeah. Come around. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. way more fun. I'm sorry. It's efficient yeah. for us, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Back to the
What? Okay, do a silly one. Go ahead. Let's see the money. <laughs> 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 Nick fixed me. Yeah. What do you always say, Dad? Thank you. You have to make us repeat it a couple of times. Yeah. That's always good. Yeah, yeah. Are we good? Let's get it. Let's get it. Are we okay? Oh. Okay. 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 Right. She's making a decision. Smile. Here, hold on. 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 Okay, so we'll exit one at a time somehow. I think, right? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and look. Yeah, dude, I'm going to go ahead and look. Yes. David, that's good. We're not leaving. Yeah. Oh, come on. You ready? Marta. I'm going to say it's comfortable. Yeah. 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 All right. I think he yeah, how it's going, how it's doing. Jerry's very creative. Yeah. So, yeah, I do. Oh, this one is. So, Tom, I want you to. Yeah. Hey, Marta. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. you know, Larry Reinbaugh. Oh. Thank you, Tom. Tom's his uncle. You know, Larry has, they have activities. They go down about to the people. Thanks for being here. They, 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 bring, they, they bring a bus. They, they, they have lunch there. Larry's like, I'm going to do it. Thank you. Yeah, it's a very good one. Yeah, it's a very good one. Thank you. I Oh, yeah. You won it. You won it. Yeah, she's got it. Jimmy, we're still alive. Yes. Yep. Everyone, we're just. Not you all. We're. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Y
it's a, people know more than I know as far as people. It's amazing. So it works both ways. ways because sometimes the community doesn't know how to go about it, you know, or right. whatever. And this is just all. This is great. Love Thank you. Program. Yeah. Is, Thank you. Is the Husk girl still out there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else before, from you, Lou, or anybody? No, just thanks. This kind of this will complete our scheduled appointments for the for the meeting. Mm -hmm. We'll now move into our commissioner reports. Uh, commissioner Franker, you go first. You've been busy. Now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been <laughs> been uh, quite an eventful uh, week here. So so yeah. So uh, last Friday that uh, we went over to uh, Fostoria, the, the chamber. They had uh, one of the fundraisers was the country Mardi Gras. Uh, had a phenomenal turnout for that. It was good. Uh, Ashley Bryce was there and a uh, little boots couldn't boogie, didn't you, Bryce? Right. That, yeah, something a little like sore. A little sore, but yeah. yeah right. Cowboy boots on? He, yeah, he had boots on. Yeah, yeah he didn't have a pad, though. That's what, yeah, we didn't recognize Big him. Big belt yeah. buckle? Right, right, right. He fit yeah. right in. <laughs> so, yeah, so we had that on Friday. And then uh, Saturday night, the Southern County Fair, they had their first annual uh, reverse raffle fundraiser. And again, another, they had uh, over to KFC and that. Whole room was full, uh, was awesome. Awesome. so they had 220 or 30 people in there. And, we didn't uh, want anything. Uh, so yeah, so that's what. Uh, yeah, sorry about your life, same as mine. That we didn't, but that's actually, all the tickets uh, on your desk. Yeah, Ron Hoover was, uh, you know, the winner of the whole uh, uh, event of that. So that was very, very well done, and I think you're planning on doing it next year. Actually, this morning, uh, president of the uh, City County Fair, Brian Stipe, and I was out WTTF, he kind of gave a summary of that, Perfect. and also their events coming up uh, at the fair, and also their uh, building project for the small animal for the, uh, they're putting a new building up after this year's fair, they're going to uh, uh, tear the other one down and put up for like the goats and rabbits, and, uh, and then make a show arena in there for them. So a uh, big project uh, uh, coming to us from the Site County Fair. So uh, a couple new events that they're having, kind of bring them back from last, they haven't had some for the last 10 years, it'd be like a draft. Uh, horse pull on Thursday, so Thursday's going to be quite a bit of a draft uh, shows and, and polling going on on Thursday. So they're kind of bringing that event back uh, uh, from two to ten years ago on some of the different stuff they haven't done lately. So did they talk about the fence project at all? He didn't get into that, no. Yeah, because uh, they're continuing with the fence, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's another gem that we have is our county fair facility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well run. And well run, and yeah, they do a great well, job out there. It's uh, amazing. I give him kudos because you know when you get 25 people on a board, you know trying to you yeah. know herd everybody in the right direction and stuff on it. Uh, it's always interesting. So how people could happen and stuff with it. So they do a great job trying to you know steer the ship there. So uh, Sunday Bloomville Lions Club, they had their chicken uh, drive-through dinner. Went down and supported the uh, Bloomville Lions Club. Uh, great meal and uh, uh, and then as I alluded to earlier, Monday through Wednesday, I uh, was down at uh, County Commissioner Association. Kind of the, uh, the initiation of uh, first year commissioners and stuff were down there and uh, uh, had a lot of sessions, you know, throughout the day. It was, uh, you know, uh, daylight to, to dark, uh, you know, uh, intensive training and, uh, you know, they, they barely had enough time for us to get a little break for lunch and supper and stuff on that. So it was very, very intensive. So a lot of great ideas Seriously, and stuff on that. Pretty. No, it was good. Yeah. It was, well put together, well yeah. organized, and uh, yeah, they did, did a really good job. Uh, probably 35 or so new commissioners were at the, uh, that event, and uh, a lot of the, you know, you pick up a lot of stuff, not only from the speakers, but kind of some round table stuff, you know, cryo tribulations of, you know, that's what they're where, seeing. That's, so where that's, the where the, that's where the real meetings uh, and You know that. that so, yeah, down. so, uh, right. no, it was a great event. Actually, uh, um, uh, Teresa, Garcia from Sedusi mm -hmm. County, she was down and did a uh, discussion kind of on uh, oh, the administrator okay. part, so she did a uh, yeah, yes, nice job with it. that. So, uh, yeah, it's good to have somebody local uh, down there. So, uh, and then got back uh, yesterday afternoon and had a regional planning executive meeting last night. And uh, just an upcoming event, did get a flyer on, we'll probably get some more, but uh, the Project Lifesaver, they're having their uh, annual event uh, April 1st out to uh, uh, the Tip of Moose and uh, Cindy Beats kind of the lead on that. So uh, uh, the Project Lifesaver, that's where they, you know, fundraise to help for anybody that has the braces for anybody with dementia or so that way they don't get uh, too far away from home if they get lost. So a great, great project up on that work deal with the sheriff and, uh, you know, helping on that. So uh, that's what I got. So good, good, good. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. You're up. Good. 
busy week this week. Um, Jimmy and I went out to a meeting at uh, the old Kroger building. Uh, so John Spark from EMA, he's leading up an eclipse committee. So we have a, what is, is it, lunar eclipse? It's a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse. Yep. Thank you, Jimmy. Yep. Um, yeah, so April 2024, um, <clears throat> there's going to be an eclipse, and we're right in line here in Seneca County as far as its path is going to go for um, probably one of the more clear or better visuals as far as that eclipse goes. But um, other communities that have seen this in the past, they'll have a major influx of population to the county, um, sometimes to the tune of an extra 50 to 100,000. So we had different community leaders and different organizations at the meeting discussing how we can handle the influx of population, sanitary issues, public safety, um, emergency health, the loads on the cell phone towers. I mean, uh, Seneca County being 56, 58,000 people, when you have an influx of an additional 50 to 100,000, that can really put a tap and drain on your resources. So we're trying to get ahead of that and uh, be prepared for that uh, eclipse that's coming here uh, almost a year from now. So. Um, I think they're going to divvy it up into certain committees here as far as uh, the different tasks and stuff go. I know Bryce was there and TSEP and uh, a lot of our uh, ham radio folks, so everybody's going to be collaborating to try to handle that uh, event and make sure we're as prepared as can be. Um, also on Monday, I attended a Board of Elections meeting as they discussed the legitimacy of some petitions. Um, it's an interesting process to watch. It's a very full room. Um, wasn't uh, exactly excited about the outcome of that. I just hope it doesn't set the county up for something to uh, uh, get in trouble because our county prosecutor weighed in on it, gave a uh, recommendation. The board went against that there at the uh, board of elections, so I wasn't uh, particularly thrilled with that, but we'll see what that, how that turns out. Tonight we have the uh, TSEP annual awards, or the TSEP annual meeting. Uh, that'll be out there at Carmi's uh, start Social hour starts from what, five to six, I believe, Bryce? Next five o'clock starts. Five, social hour five? Yeah, uh, starts at five, opening at, or like little opening program and then dinner buffet stuff at 545. Mm -hmm. We'll have you out the door yeah, by yeah. 730. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to make sure the time is right so the county has a table for that, so we will be out to uh, partake in that. Um, tomorrow there's two different events going on. I don't know if they'll be at both at the same time, but we have a uh, recovery task force meeting at noon. And also, I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but they're having an opportunity center luncheon at 11.30 tomorrow. Yeah, so I'll be there for that. Yeah. yeah, so we might have to divide and conquer on that one. So um, also this week, um, as I was digging through, I don't know where Commissioner, or ex Commissioner Kirshner went, but as I was going through some of his files, I dug through his old dot file, um, looking at some of the projects going on in Wood and Hancock County um, to the tune of 26 million. We get a lot of emails here as far as how we can improve our roads locally. Um, so I did some digging here, looked up our uh, transportation improvement plan. Last time we did one was back in 2017. Um, it's so old to the point where it doesn't even have our updated logos on here, so it's probably in need of some updating. But talked to Mark Zimmerman, talking to some of our state representation, um, leaders of Fostoria, Tiffin here, but um, we're not getting our fair share from ODOT, and I know Mike Kirshner really pounded that over the last uh, uh, eight years of his um, time, time in office, so I just I'd like to set up some more meetings here with ODOT and see what we need to do to get more road projects going here in Seneca County. So, Commissioner Zoller before that, mm -hmm. that was his big thing. <clears throat> yeah, we're definitely not getting our fair share back as far as what we contribute. You I should get the county treasurer job over there, Paul Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he a trucking company and you know, he knows a lot of people. You're on that committee, Paul. Uh, thank you. Thanks for thanks for agreeing. To thanks for your service, Paul. <laughs> he's probably done that before. Yeah. Regional planning was always kind of part of that. So I think honestly, probably I drafted that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I say, you probably wrote that. Yeah. 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 It's it's still it's great. I'm glad you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. So trying to trying to do some going through some of Mike's old notes mm -hmm. and stuff, and just trying to brush up on that and what's been discussed, what hasn't, and just trying to look at ways we can bring more monies back here to Seneca County. Um, some of the safety issues here with some of our roads. I don't want to see accidents and people get hurt and death. So if we can make it safer for our constituents, I think it's uh, time more to be spent um, looking through this and trying to reach out to ODOT. Um, event this weekend, the Imagine Youth, they're having a fundraiser at Urban Woody here. Uh, this weekend's on Saturday. Um, Imagine Youth, that's the uh, organization uh, with Micah Hyde where they uh, they do a lot of good here for the community, whether it's 
buying these kids shoes or putting on the football camps. Or I just, there's a whole array of things that they do, but that fundraiser is here this weekend, Saturday, over in Foster Ray Thurman So if you're not doing anything, stop out. And then uh, that's all I've got for now. Yeah, good job. Uh, I have quite a few meetings, phone calls behind the scenes. I don't think they have anything really to announce, but Lou, for tomorrow, or to report out, uh, you, your recovery task force, that, that's kind of an important meeting. So are you saying you're gonna to go to that? I'm gonna definitely be there. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna try to hit both if I can, but I might be So safe. I have to, so we we can come out early. We're gonna be there, we'll be there before 11.30 okay. a little bit, work the crowd. I don't know if you would like us to make any remarks, if you could put us on early, otherwise okay. we'll just be well, there. I'll be there the whole time. Yeah, and then if we leave, because I have to leave anyhow, then Commissioner Franker can represent the commissioners. Perfect. But uh, we'll always look forward to that your lunch and, and your report and um, but unfortunately we, I won't be able to stay at the end and, and you won't. Uh, and so I'm not there in person, I'll be there in spirit. I don't yeah. try to be having lunch with you guys and talking about uh, overdoses in the community so I'll be there in spirit. Yeah but that's a, that's a, that's a huge committee that meets. You guys meet monthly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I understand. So Thank it's you. The beauty of three, we can cover a lot of territory, yeah. Um, County Administrator's report. Okay, um, the Sheriff's Office submitted a um, grant that they did through the uh, Ohio Department of Health. Um, it's a reimbursable grant, basically COVID uh, mitigation. They can use it for so like rapid tests, cleaning supplies, <coughs> um, certain filtration systems that they could put in. Um, and so they did receive that. It's $160,000 that they received. Um, but again, it's reimbursable, so they would need the 160 uh, fronted to them. And then as the money comes back in, it'll go into general fund. But they were awarded that. Um, they're pretty excited to have the opportunity to kind of uh, get ahead of some of that. They Right now, they have to do COVID testing for all the uh, inmates coming in, the rapid tests. So they can purchase those. Uh, it's very specific on what they need to do. It is you know, COVID mitigation directly to cleaning and supplies like that, so. Um, you know, we find out with EMS, when we were in the heart of COVID, there were supplies all over the place. Mm -hmm. we, we had stacks of them. Mm -hmm. and, but today, we're trying to get test kits, and it's, it's, they're harder to get, and they, they cost a heck of a lot more money. So uh, we still need that stuff. Yes, it's right. It's they do. Um, yeah. it. So that, that's pleasing to hear. So I think one thing I'd like to add as we go through these kind of things is we front money. I know it's important to all of us. Barb's there. I mean, a logical question is does that affect us at all if we front the 160000 I think we're good with our carryover, but it, it's not a bad habit to have this discussion as we go through this because if we did five of these in a row it might and it look. just depends when the money gets and, and it's all that yeah, yeah. So, so, so the, and they have to have this spent by october okay. so um, yeah. it's pretty fast that they're going to have to spend right. the money so for we're good so. with it and it's one hundred sixty thousand. but uh, yeah so i think in the future when you ask us that just maybe have a sentence ready that uh, we have the money to do it. We're going to get reimbursed that right? That kind of thing. Right. Just, yeah, so just to get us, because of, there's going to be more of this that comes yeah. out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I did uh, speak with uh, them yesterday and just asked that if they do have a grant like this that's reimbursable to talk to us. Um, they're usually pretty good yeah. at it. This one, they really didn't think that the amount of money that they were to get would be yeah. this high. They thought maybe nice 25000 or less. Um, but Who um, applied for that grant? Uh, I believe Lieutenant Cunningham did. So that's that's awesome. They did the work. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, the we received. Well, actually, okay. I yeah got a call from um, Carrie Cart with uh, GL Cap yesterday. She said that uh, she was requesting to see if you guys would be available to meet uh, sometime next week, the seventh, eighth, or ninth. 
um, to talk about the federal appropriation grant that's available. Um, you could use that for quite a few things. She did mention like new buildings. You kind of were along the lines of already having some drawings or something done that that money could be utilized for that. Um, so she was going to gather some additional information. It is due by March 23rd, so it's going to have to be a very fast process if you're interested. Uh, but she is available the 7th, 8th, and 9th. 7th is better for me. Okay. I can do the 9th. Yep. Yeah. Can we do Tuesday? 7th for Florio? That'll be perfect. It gives her a little bit more time. Okay, I'll set that up then. Uh, or is that enough time for us to be ready for her? Probably. Can we do afternoon? I'm going to be pretty tight up that morning. Yeah, I don't have a problem with I'll that. I'll look at schedules and get the best time based on. You get it back with you. Yeah, no matter what, whatever time I'm I think I'm good, but you have to look at it. Yeah, she's going to be bringing information on what those funds, what that grant could be used for, but she thinks that there's several opportunities out there um, for us. So. Okay. Um, as far as that, she did reach out in regards to the uh, capital, jail capital improvement. <clears throat> We got an email back saying that they were done or just finalizing the scoring of all of the grant applications that came in. Um, and so they wrote back that they would hopefully in the next three to four, it said. It did not say weeks, days, months, <laughs> or years. Uh, so I'm not sure, but the next three to four something, we will we should have an update on the Did you stop over to see when you were in the state house? Who's that? Though? Whatever that agency is. <laughs> <laughs> Three to four, I'm like, okay, hopefully <laughs> yeah. that means days, but that it's probably That is a priority weeks. from the CCAO is the you know, yeah, lot of the jail stuff. And yeah. Yeah, whether no Correctional facilities. Or, yeah, and a lot of stuff in his right. range right. or whatever. And the governor's right. also. Yeah, oh, I think I should yeah, follow yeah. his policies a little yeah. bit on that. Yeah. 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 yeah, so hopefully we hear something. So three so to yeah, four days is three. I think it's probably three to four weeks, but I'll keep you updated on that. Um, during the duct cleaning over at the uh, RTA, um, they had proposed that they thought that it would be in the best interest of the county to um, actually replace the ducts on the first floor at the RTA. Uh, so Wadsworth put together a, um, currently the system is shut down. Uh, so we're kind of in that emergency um, situation where it not, does need to be handled quicker. Um, rather hopefully in the next few weeks if we can get it taken care of. Paul, um, are you listening so, on this one? I am. Okay, yep. yeah, because this affects. Yeah, Thank so first of scope of duty um, right now would be to remove, uh, take out all the old duct work, replace it. We did receive that estimate from Wadsworth this week. It was $97,933. Um, so do, we have, do we have seat belts for these chairs? <laughs> <laughs> Every one of these, I feel I mean, like. At least for setting down. One. I mean, it's all yeah. right. Okay. Uh, so costly. Um, but they are able to do that. Part of that is that they are able to do it on the weekend. Uh, there, we will ask um, that those offices, they will have to shut down for one day. We'll work with um, the treasurer and the recorder. It really affects them most, but I know that the auditor is involved and it'll affect them as well. Um, but One weekday and a weekend? It'll be, they'll do it on the weekend as far as removing everything. Um, so it'll either, either be a Friday or Monday, whatever best suits them. I will get with them uh, later to coordinate that when, when it'll work for all of them. And then from there, then they'll replace the ductwork, but that's not, it doesn't, they don't need to be out for that. When they remove everything, it's a little mill. So, um, so like working through that, I did speak with uh, the prosecutor's office on emergency um, so that we didn't have to take this out for bid because it is for competitive bidding because it is uh, over 50, it's below 100. So just a few steps that we have to do. I'll run the uh, resolution and everything else by the prosecutor's office one final time. But uh, if you'd like to move forward with that project again, that is something they're currently working on the annex. They would probably be able to do that in the next two weeks. So I have to get a better timeline. But again, the system is currently shut down, uh, and they will need that up and running as. as quickly as possible. Uh, Bill mentioned today that they're, mm -hmm. they seem to be uh, not having as much heat, obviously, <laughs> with the system being set down over there right now. So luckily it's been a little bit warmer, but um, we'd like to get now, Does anybody, that. any commissioners have any comments on this, questions? I'm okay personally. Yeah, no, I think it's, yeah, we need to progress with this. Yeah. 
Okay. And I'm sure, Paul, if we need to put up a tent in front of the courthouse for temporary, you guys okay just move in there. <laughs> yeah. Or a tent, that'd be great. Yeah, there you go. We waited a little bit for We'll put sides on it, okay? So, yeah, we'll be sure. open. We'll put sides on it. You'll, you'll, you'll be glad when, when it's replaced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the final thing I have is just the uh, data center access policy. We met a while back, and uh, the committee had just some suggestions to update the language on that. Um, so I updated the language, sent that out to everybody on the committee, uh, all approved of the language change. Uh, so I'm just asking uh, for your guys' approval to stamp this with the date that we, that is effective. Just with. so everyone knows, this will possibly be an annual event yeah. <clears throat> where the IT committee meets every year. If we change anything, then we note it at the bottom, amend it, and we put the date in, the commissioners ratify it. And so at the bottom of the agreement, there are four or five dates. So this will happen again next year, and uh, I think it's a good thing. So I'm good with it. Did you guys have any questions? No, I think it's important to yeah, stay on top of it. Mm -hmm. That's I didn't know it they take so, one year to but you probably meet in between or something. Right? Yeah, and we yeah. had changes in uh, elected. So for yeah. the public's uh, information, um, over at the courthouse, uh, we have a, a data center. It's basically Fort Knox. You have to all kinds of security to get in there. It's temperature controlled, um, fire protected, generator, generator, cameras everywhere. And uh, we, and, and for example, the treasurer's here now, he and the auditor just moved their file server over into that room. Uh, the courthouse is uh, a county building, um, but it is uh, under the protection of the sheriff. So you can't get in and out of the courthouse after hours unless you work there and you have a special fob, and, and you sure can't get in that. Building, so we have an access policy that uh, that will allow during business hours and after business hours, um, electeds and vendors who need to get in. And it's very it's spelled out. It's one thing to get into the courthouse, then you have to go down and get into the the room where everything's housed. So uh, we work that all out with the electeds and the sheriffs. We talk about that every year with our IT people. <clears throat> and as we've all learned, uh, the county has a system, but, but almost all the electeds have third-party software that they work with. And they have vendors that need to get in at different times. So it's not, um, it, it just requires good communication because we don't want people in and out of there. We're, we're worried about cyber attacks. We're worried about, you know, Auditors worried about the, you know, their information, the treasurer, etc. So I think we, I'm pleased with it. Jamie, you sat through the first round of this, and uh, so that's what we're just uh, um, ratifying for next year, and that'll just be an ongoing process. But, but I'm pleased with, uh, I think, well, yeah, yeah very really, much yeah. the way things are headed right. and. We have a new sheriff now after COVID and some new electives, Judge Alt, for example, and a new county administrator. So a lot of things are changing. And I think we're good. So that was primarily for the public to hear, but I, I think it's good to know. Back to you. Thank you. I'll get that sent out then so that everybody has a copy with the updated date of today uh, that it was amended. Um, and that is all I have. Okay, any, any other comments before we go into old business? We good? Yep. Okay, any old business? Any old business? We good? Okay, new business. Guess that means I'm up. Um, I'm just going to okay. give a quick um, revenue expense report for the month of February. Um, we collected $1,879,391.25 in revenue in February. We expended $3,467,004.02 in um, for the month of February. Of that, $1 million of it was transferred out of general fund to our capital improvement fund. So 
it's kind of a little bit of a skewed number because it's not really an expense. We just moved it to a different fund. Okay. So that's what I have there. Um, I have um, a few supplemental appropriations. Uh, victim assistance um, fund uh, 2110 is requesting a transfer out of uh, $55,365.58. This is so that they can move, the, the fund that it's being moved out of is an old grant fund because we wrote, they rotate their funds every year so that she can keep track of all of her expenses because she has, she, we rotate them, there's three different funds that they wrote in, into and out of um, because then she has specific grant, a specific line that she has for um, each grant year. And her grant years are federal fiscal years. So in October is when she starts a new grant year. So this is a cleanup to get this these funds to the current year, um, basically. And there will be a resolution for that transfer later. Um, the engineer's office, uh, Fund 1020, um, is asking for $3,247.66 in additional uh, software license and services just for additional software that they have. Uh, emergency management fund um, is asking for $3,810 for their leases. Uh, this is um, to close out a copy your lease with a buyout. So basically they're ending the contract with <coughs> a small buyout um, that we just pay them and it just takes care of the lease itself. And then the ambulance service is requesting $14,000 um, for their for training. Um, this goes um, in lines with uh, Dr. Sauber's training from Mercy. And then um, the last thing I have is an appropriation adjustment um, from the general fund, um, from professional services to the software license line um, in the amount of $29,000. This is for the safe bill. Um, we originally thought it would come in as a as a service, and they are billing it as a actual software. So it's just an accounting adjustment. Okay, so we need a motion. So move. Second. Okay, let's have discussion. Uh, nice job, Barb. Thank you. Any uh, discussions from either of you on on these line mm -hmm. items? No, I think yeah, I think good. Yep. So. Uh, I do have one. So I. Uh, the uh, EMS training. This is this looks like half of it. It's the same, yeah. Okay. Yeah, part of it was already there. Just yeah. The yeah, original budget. The original budget was for ten thousand um, dollars, and then so it twenty four. It's twenty four. Twenty four. Mm -hmm. okay. Slightly so under that. But so yeah. we're good. We pay for the year. And then yep. the trainings. It's already going on yep. every month. Okay. Um, and so is this for the leases out there by the fairgrounds? The copiers out there. It's something. John's. Yeah. Okay. He had John, an old yeah. one that right. he's just that he no longer has. It's I got just, it. I just still. we don't need. I don't want to get in the real yeah. one. So he put the. He just needed to buy out. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. And uh, it all looks good to me. We have the first and second. Roll call. <coughs> Commissioner Franker. Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Shaw. Yes. Commissioner Paradiso. Yes. Thank you. You finished? I'm done. Good. Uh, how things okay. going on out there for you? Real good. Yeah, it's going. It's we're we're, we're getting and we're getting there. <coughs> yeah. It's yeah. Good. Done so well. Yeah. Oh. We had uh, he had three or four interviews, so that's been good. We're and, sliding um, the EMS discussion in. Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. But yeah, that's it's. Been Anything that's it's it's pretty exciting and positive, and I know Barb makes trips out with the accounting, and the, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, on to resolutions. The first one I have is a resolution authorizing the fund transfer be made to the VOCA Grant Fund uh, 2112. Uh, that's what Bart just had discussed for that. Okay, we need a motion. So move. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Frankert? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Next resolution I have is a resolution establishing the indigent uh, driver alcohol treatment and indigent drivers interlock and alcohol monitoring fund 1177 on behalf of the juvenile probate court. Okay. Motion to 
Okay. Second. Mr. Frankert? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Perry's? Yes. We have a resolution authorizing the 4D service contract between the Seneca County Common Pleas Court 1, Common Pleas Court 2, Juvenile Clerk, Juvenile Magistrate, Clerk of Courts, Sheriff's Office, and, the Seneca, and Seneca County on behalf of the Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services, effective 1-1-2023 through 12 31 2023 Okay, I'll make a motion. Second. Commissioner Franklin. Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? <coughs> yes. We have a resolution rescinding the amended resolution 2023-38 authorizing Oriana House to enter into contract with JB Roofing. Um, this is just a change in the um, actual project that they had. They were initially going to do two portions of it came back after we did the resolution and now they're only going to do one. So it's been kind of back and forth with funding, but uh, so they are only moving forward with one portion of them. So we passed last week the second part and now they're not doing it. Okay. <laughs> so just going back to the original. So move. Second, this discussion. I, I mentioned last week something didn't seem right, remember? Well, it's I, I, dealing with so many different of them. One saying they were supposed to, then the, the other one came back and said, yes, it was, and no, it's not, and so uh, this should be final. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> Hopefully and they I can know move they've worked, with it. They've worked really they are, hard. A lot of it has to do with just the funding that they could get, yeah. and then they wanted to put additional money into so it. So they wanted this so. project, right, got this funding, and they've been trying to... Trying to maximize where they it, can put all their money at to get do the bids and costs the, going on. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think they've done a nice job on it. So. Well needed projects. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard when you never know is it's a sliding scale it's on the moving target. Yeah. 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 You know, we're gonna we're we're in that ourselves. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. We'll call <coughs> Mr. Franker? Yes. Commissioner Shuff? Yes. Commissioner Diesel? Yes. I haven't lost my voice yet. But Oof. Got two more resolutions. Say we're so, are we okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Go ahead, thank you. Okay, we have a resolution uh, resolving the balances of PNC account uh, 9582 and U.S. Bank 4945 for the Seneca County Treasurer's Office. Okay. So move. A second. Second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Franker. So oh. just enough, what is, yeah. could you discuss your lightning on it? So, Paul, you're, you can probably help me, but this is just where, let me actually, I have some documentation on cash. So these accounts, they have been closed, correct, yes. already? Yes. Um, and so, but the balances in-house were not matching. Right. So this is just rectifying that, basically. Up. And he does have, with that I've attached, um, he did get, uh, he had a meeting with the state auditor, and they gave him documentation on what we need what we needed to do and how that was okay. So I attached that with that resolution. Yeah, good. good question. Yeah. I, we should uh, slow down on that. It's good. That's why we do it the way we do right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. bringing it up. Okay. Any other, hearing nothing else, roll call. Commissioner Frankert? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Commissioner Ferdiso? Yes. We have a resolution authorizing the Seneca County Board of Commissioners to enter into an engineering services agreement the Stantec Consulting Services for the 2023 Land Acquisition Assistance <coughs> Agreement and all other related documents. I'll make a motion. Second. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I think this is just part of our master plan to uh, acquire properties around the airport. Mm. This fits in. We've been working on this for a while, right? Mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And um, so uh, this is all paid for with government with uh, federal money well, with federal money and uh, so yeah it's exciting we progress out there uh, so we have first did you say yeah I mean second. Yeah. second uh roll call commissioner franker yes commissioner shaw yes commissioner Fairdiesel. yes 
We have a resolution authorizing the contract between Seneca Regional Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Services in Seneca County, Ohio for the tourism related services effective January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2026. Your motion? So, so if we don't move, then we don't do this. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make it first. I'll make it first. <laughs> we'll move you. Yeah. We'll give you a second, though. Just remember. Right, right. Second. Yeah. Second. I'll second the motion. So. Okay. Any any further discussion? We heard the uh, presentation earlier. Are we good? Yep. Here and now, roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Commissioner Bernisa? Yes. And we're all under protests on this. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's exciting. Yep. Three days going to go fast. Yep. Yeah. Appreciate that. Good. We have a resolution setting the date and time for viewing and public hearing for the vacation of two alleys located in Springville, Springville Big Springs Township, Seneca County, Ohio. Um, <coughs> that is uh, Thursday, March 30th, 2023 at 915 uh, for the viewing of the proposed vacation and uh, Thursday, March 30th, 2023 at 1015 um, setting as the date, time and place for the public hearing. What was the date on again? I'm sorry. March 30th. Okay. Yeah, what time? The viewing is 9.15. Uh, and you, then you the hearing is 10.15. We'll have it on there. No for you. Okay. Okay. I'll move for passage. I'll second. Second. Uh, just discussion. Been to a few of these. So the, the viewing, we don't talk about what I'm saying. Right. You just right. go out and look at it. Okay. So that's that, uh, but the parties are there and we just have a discussion. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of odd because I never went through one of these before. I've been through a few, but my first one is, so there's a viewing and then um, public hearing is, is where the comments can cut for the break. Yeah. And that'll be during the regular board session. And that'll be the regular board session. Fair enough. Good. We vacated one of our little township roads, so. Went through the same thing. Went through the process. Things. Yeah. I've been, to, I've been to nowhere land two or three times, and I'm standing there at an intersection. And, right. There's actually, Jamie, I'll yeah. read the other ones. There's actually four total, so. Four. But yeah, you know, it is right. beneficial to go out and see mm -hmm. what you're, what's being done. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we have first, second, roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Shuffle? Yes. Commissioner Perry Yes. This is setting the date and time for the viewing and public hearing for the vacation of the two alleys located in Alveda, <coughs> Big Springs Township, Seneca County. Um, and let's see, so that is again Thursday, March 30th at 925 is the viewing. Um, and then March 30th at 1025. Uh, uh, for the time, date, and place for the public hearing. There's total for that. Okay. Um, as for so moved. Second. <coughs> second. Second. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradis? Yes. Yeah, nice job. Anything else? Yeah, we're good. Hey, Jim. Uh, we'll start, so yeah, something. Yeah. So I don't know, sure. Julie's on. It's it's the uh, uh, weeks major week this week and stuff. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, yeah, I don't know. Julie on online. I don't know. Julie online. Is she on? I don't see her on the list. Her. So yeah, we're just giving them a shout out for the. Yep. Yeah, so the auditor over. Auditor. They have all these weeks. Yeah, from anything from your grocery stores to fuel to scales and everything. So yeah. Yep, there's a little feature on our website. We put that up on Facebook. You can That's read right, a little yeah, bit more about it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, any public comment? Anyone in the audience that has us, you're free to speak. Anybody want to speak? We good back there? I do have, I mean, uh, so I have, okay. yep. as long as nobody else sure. Yeah, so. Then we'll open um, it up to the yeah, next we'll gym. So right. So yep. yeah, still no business yet, so. Uh, a couple things. So when I was down at uh, the training, so Peter Bonnerberg was yeah. there. So basically, kind of giving an update on broadband, and so the discussion kind of was that uh, you know the first round of money kind of went to the Appalachia area, and sounded like that they when they did their um, scope of the project, 
they kind of got skewed a little bit on that, so they're going to try to change it to kind of balance it out, balance out a little bit for the next uh, funding uh, round on that. Hopefully, we get some federal money as we keep talking about the $500 million to close a billion dollars to kind of sprinkle around. Uh, basically, they're going to kind of change the criteria, make it, you know, made a little simpler and kind of uh, seven different, you know, to, uh, to, to kind of do a scoring to see who's going to get the biggest benefit out of it. So. Yeah. Which and state? It's how much we get? Well, oh, and it, yeah. like down in counties and all that. How oh, like, once yeah, the, once it comes to Ohio, Ohio gets, right? This yeah. is the Ohio thing. Okay. Yeah. So once they get the, right. uh, get the formulation for that, uh, uh, but he uh, actually uh, uh, once we you know, talk to him, he said he talked to Nate from. Yeah. Actually, they, I they just, keep a copy. I just talked talk to him. Full time. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. So, yeah. So yeah. Good on that. So. Anything maybe we could uh, on EMS buildings get the question on where we're at on that is there, uh, there I, next week so we the architect uh, called the attorney architect over you and he had a couple of questions about something and you took care of it right yeah now. there was there's uh, currently a, they're just looking with the building code department there was kind of a holdup that may cost uh, quite a bit of money uh, if we're re actually required to do it. So he was just going to look into that further. Hopefully we'll have an update um, next week. I would Perfect. think next week we should be able to have an update on that. Well, and we have this grant, uh, potential grant uh, for Carry the money on. that closes in March. Right. So that's, you might, well, that or egg, yeah, whatever. Or the egg, egg yes, yeah. Whatever, right. Right. Yeah, Carrie will give us all those details. Uh, we're, yep. we're, we will be shovel ready. Once those prints are definitely, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, EMS, we're so shovel ready. We've yeah. got we've got the land and everything. We're waiting on the architects, final drawings. Then we will bid it out, and we're ready to go. Is that? Mm -hmm. is, yep. that am I oversimplifying it, or is that no, okay? I mean, that's where we're at. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, if that's a requirement, we'll be able to hand the prints to the for the grant. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So mm -hmm. that's, it might be some good news. Okay, anything else? I'm good. That's good. It, it's, and you know this too, it's just, it's just great that we get out and uh, meet with our state legislature mm -hmm. people. We get down to Columbus, talk to our uh, organization, the county commissioners. It's just it all, it's good stuff. Speaking of that, is Mike Ditto on the phone by any chance? Mm -hmm. Mike, this is a segue into you. We saved the best for last, wow. buddy. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. Good morning. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's also great uh, that the relationship that you have with the County Commissioner's Association, uh, we share that relationship with you. And uh, sorry I missed you while you were down here, Commissioner Frankert, but I hope it was a worthwhile endeavor while you were here. Um, kind of the big news of this past week, um, a couple of things. Uh, number one, the Ohio House uh, passed uh, their version of the state's transportation budget. Uh, and Commissioner Schaub, I, I heard you articulate uh, some of the things with ODOT and others. One of the things I think that is pretty well of note in this budget is that uh, in the current version, which still has to be debated and, and approved by the Ohio Senate, uh, is that they included $1 billion with a B uh, for the Rural Highway Fund. Uh, this will be an investment for projects counties that don't have a municipality of more than 65,000 residents. Uh, that is something that is going to continue to be debated over the next month. Um, the Ohio Senate has until April 1st, uh, I'm sorry, the Ohio Senate and House have until about April 1st to get the budget done, which I, I absolutely believe they will do. Uh, it was a strong bipartisan vote out of the House for that provision. Um, and there's also uh, in, that, uh, in that budget, $2.2 billion for pavement projects, $717 million for bridges, $360 million for safety upgrades, and $1.5 billion for large traffic capacity adding projects. Um, so this is, uh, as the, the House has called it, a jobs bill, uh, and it, it may make some major changes if ultimately adopted um, to the way we fund uh, local highways. So stay tuned on that. We'll keep you posted as I'm sure more amendments and things will come up, but that is, uh, that is uh, presumably just about every county in the state, particularly the rural counties like yours. Hey, Mike, just out of curiosity, Hi. last time we had a plan done was 2017, so it's six years old. Um, any recommendations on that? Does it need to be updated or how, how long do you think these things are valid for? Great question. Uh, 
depends on the content of those types of reports, but generally speaking, uh, and I would have to go back and look to be sure on this one is what you're referring to, but um, those, those plans usually last hmm, 10 years or so, maybe a little bit more, but again, it really does depend on the content. So we'll take a look at that and see if that's something that uh, maybe it's worth having a meeting with some of the uh, ODOT officials, which uh, the team here at Hybrid can help uh, set up as well. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, you never know, especially with, with the transportation budget changing every two years, uh, a lot can impact what is in past reports um, that could, could change uh, kind of the outlook for various municipalities and counties. Thank you. Hey, Mike, also when I was down there for the CCAO deal, you know, there's, there's a lot of counties that's uh, kind of looking at what we went through as far as EMS, and so I was kind of alluding to them to make sure they reach out to their, their legislature when it comes time you know, to make EMS an essential service and uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, some, how we went through our levies and stuff on that too. So, uh, yeah, we're not the only one that, uh, you know, has trials and tribulations and stuff with, you know, moving on to different ways of running our EMS system, so. That's, that's here, and I think as Commissioner Pompiso knows, we were both copied on an email from um, the representative Quick's office last week. Uh, there's uh, some reports now out there and they're coordinating with us and with the uh, EMS Chiefs Association on finalizing some language for us to all take a look at on the EMS as an essential service. And as we talked about in some previous meetings, uh, just the essential service designation from the, the legal team's view is not quite enough uh, for us to, to really effectuate any change on that so we're going to try and go a little bit of a step further uh, and having some language drafted dealing with medicaid reimbursement and how localities get reimbursed um, from ground emergency medical transportation they can call the gemt services uh, so uh, representative clicking up on it and what you sent me back um and thanks to jimmy for his assistance on that yeah. as well i know great stuff to us um, that once we have full language back, we would be glad to share that with other counties. And we've asked for a meeting with the County Commissioners Association to work with them on it. So uh, thank you for that uh, information. That's that's really good. Yeah, and Jimmy, thanks for that. Uh, Mike, I watched that and that uh, testimony in its yeah. entirety. The Coshocton EMS director, I think we've Todd Schroyer, he came into our meeting. He yeah. came into our meeting. On Zoom. Uh, and they're a little smaller county than us, actually. Kind of a similar, they they're kind of went through what story. we're going through 10, and, 20 uh, years ago. Yeah. I, I thought it was, it was spot on everything we're trying to do and say, and that was pretty powerful testimony. It, that was in front of the Medicaid committee. And so there's federal money. If we just do, if we just do this, then we can apply and get this federal money. And um, so I, your point, Bill. I think there's a clearly an awareness that has grown countywide, and um, and it's it's risen, you know, to the to the top level in the state. So it's going good. And that's where you hear the comment. You know, yeah, everybody appreciates the volunteers, but we're just running out of them, and, and it's just a matter of yeah, it's funny. Yeah, and you know, and he went through the fun. And, you know, it's yeah, it's manpower and resources, and and which is funding and. Uh, you're right. Yeah. No, it's all that. Well, I, I think this has a potential, once we get some language back, to be a pretty big deal uh, that, that I honestly think Senate County has, has taken the lead on getting the ball rolling uh, following our meetings that we had last year in Columbus, um, which is great news. And we're, we're eager to kind of bring everybody together. Obviously, you never want to see other counties or any county struggling uh, with trying to provide services to their communities. but. In this instance, I do think that there is uh, there is strength in numbers uh, when we can get other counties on the same page to try and impact some change here. So uh, it's it's important to us to be able to, to work with you all and the other interested parties on this. And as soon as we have some language back, I think this office has some good stuff. We'll start reaching out to the others that are impacted. Very good, great work. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, sorry, Commissioner Downer too. Yeah, should have caught up. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, any other? Yeah, I will open the lines here for the Zoom online. call. Yeah, if anybody wants to come forward, you can unmute your line and speak during public comment right now. It's all county kind of employees on there today. Pretty much. Well, we value them as well. 
Right. Yeah, a lot more people on the Facebook, but you can't speak on the Facebook. You got to do it through Zoom. So. So hearing uh, no other comment, um, our next meeting will be. Uh, we're, we're on Thursday. I don't know if we're talking about. It's Thursday until we change. Thursday. Yeah. We okay. So we'll have our next meeting on the ninth at ten o'clock. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Meeting adjourned. <coughs>